concerned are you about the potential impact of the dollar status as the world's reserve currency? Um, let's see. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Producer Matt is the one who came up with that clip. I've laughed about it 10 times already today. Joining me now, we'll discuss the symbolism of that with the great Carol Roth, obviously author of many, many books. Her latest might be her greatest, You Will Own Nothing. Highly recommend it if you want to know the plans these dirty commies have for you. Carol, okay, symbolism aside, not feeling very bullish on the dollar, Carol. I, even if Republicans take over, we all know no one's cutting any spending. I love the fact that the spirit world had to intervene with Janet Yellen because they just didn't <laughs> trust what was going to come out of her mouth. And they're like, we've just we've got this for you. We're just going to dump the Treasury sign on the floor. as should have been done a long time ago. Listen, even Janet Yellen is coming out and saying we need to get our deficits under control or we're going to be in big trouble. And we know when Janet Yellen gets to that conclusion, it is far too late. And it's a very scary situation, Jesse, because I feel like we're in this game of chess where anytime you make a move, you know that there's going to be something bad coming on the other side. You're, you're locked all across the board and whatever it is that you want to do, some sort of bad outcome is going to happen. And we're starting to see you know, more people come around to this idea. We're seeing lots of signs in the various markets. Um, even though the Fed has cut rates 50 basis points, the longer end of the, uh, of the Treasury yields, uh, 10 year yields are actually up about the same, maybe a little bit more than the amount that has been cut. So they're saying to, to the uh, the world, hey, we're, we're expecting something to go awry. We're also seeing at the same time that yields are uh, going up, that we're seeing gold going up and Bitcoin going up. And usually there's a trade off because, you know, for something like Bitcoin or gold, you're not getting a yield on it. So usually when yields are going up, there's some sort of a trade off. So the fact that these are all moving together, uh, basically, people are very worried about what is going to happen economically ahead. And this is not a weigh in on the election. Certainly, one choice is going to be worse and more rapid than the other. But they're saying that no matter who is in charge, we're worried about bad things happening. And really, the most likely outcome, as we've discussed before, is it means bad things that are going to happen to your purchasing power. No doubt about it. And what drives me crazy, Carol, is as you mentioned, she's talking about our deficits. We can't keep running up you know, $2 trillion deficits. And of course, she's correct. But no one wants to cut anything. You know, it's easy to say we're spending too much money, but nobody on either side seems to have the guts to say we're cutting that. And that, in the end, is the only thing that matters. Anyone can point to the deficits and say it's a problem. It's a whole other conversation to actually tell people that government check, it's not coming anymore. Well, and here's the challenge, as I talk about with the chessboard, is that we haven't been in a situation before where the debt levels are where they are. You know, we have 120 plus percent debt to GDP. Our deficits are around 7% uh, deficits to GDP. So we don't have the same flexibility that we would have if those numbers were more normalized. So even something like cutting, they have to be very careful about how they cut and, and sort of the tenor of that, because what they can't have happen is that the GDP goes down. They can't have that happen because then debt to GDP goes awry in the other direction. They're also probably taking in less in terms of revenue, uh, and that ends up creating a whole set of other problems with the deficit. So that's why I'm saying this is all this crazy puzzle piece that you have to really thread this needle very carefully with growth if you're going to do cuts, they have to be done in a way that is, you know, sort of in concert with growth. And there's a reason why former Fed chair Alan Greenspan has said in the past, we can promise you your benefits, but we cannot promise you your purchasing power. And that leads me to believe that high inflation is what we are going to end up seeing, because as you said, Nobody's going to want to redo entitlements. They're going to say, I am entitled to X dollars without the average person understanding that it's not about X dollars. It's about what X dollars can buy. This is the same population 
you know, many decades ago when there were burger wars and uh, somebody was doing really well with their quarter pounder burger, one of the chains, I think it was McDonald's, another chain said, oh, well, we'll put out a third pound burger and that'll dominate. And everybody thought of a third pound burger was was uh, smaller than a quarter pound burger. And that was a couple decades ago. And people are even less smart right oh. now. So these are the people who aren't understanding that, you know, yes, you may have this nominal amount that you're promised, but if we, you know, flush out all of your purchasing power, that isn't going to matter. And that's the chess match that we're dealing with. So just buckle up as I've been advising you guys, make sure that you have some hard assets and just be prepared that even if you think inflation is a little bit sleepy in terms of its growth, you know, the consensus is that we are, you know, in turn for another ride because they cannot let, they cannot let the economy tank. Otherwise, that will accelerate everything game over because they can't. Debt to GDP is just at too high of a level and deficits to GDP are at too high of a level. Carol, where are we at on the dollar being the world's reserve currency? We've talked about this many times. Everyone yeah. who watches this show knows about BRICS. You have educated us many times on that. But as we've also talked about, BRICS isn't ready for prime time, right? That's the thing that's no. holding the dollar up. BRICS is not ready to take that over. And when you have countries like China being the main backer of it, it's very difficult to, for me to believe the world would ever trust China in the way that they trust us. But never say never. Where's BRICS right now? So what we've seen is that central banks around the world, including some of those who are in the BRICS alliance, especially China, have been getting rid of their treasury securities. And when they've been doing that, they haven't been replacing it with another country's reserve currency. They have been replacing that with gold. And so what we've seen is that right now they're trading amongst themselves because a lot of them, you know, have import needs and different export needs, and they're able to make, you know, these trades. But when there is a sort of a, a leftover amount of surplus that they're the Chinese in particular are, off, are offering settlement for that in gold. So that's again, one of the reasons why we're starting to see some uptick in the price of gold as we have seen over the last year and why we probably will continue to do that because I don't necessarily anticipate that there's going to be this other currency, but could there be a, you know, a move back to a hard currency that sort of underlies everything? And from the central bank's perspective, you know, they're saying that they believe that gold by their actions is the one that's likely to happen. We're also, again, you kind of tied into what we're saying. So there's two things, there's the reserves, but there's also the trading currency. The U.S. just dominates as a trading currency. Well, as they do more of trades amongst themselves and they do more settlement in gold, the dollar will become um, you know, less and less vital. We're still by far and away the dominant player out there. And that's one of the, the scary things is that you know, if something were to go sideways and we don't have the right people in charge, which we haven't had for quite some time making decisions, this could really have this ripple impact around the world. And as you and I have discussed many times before, Jesse, you know, when you have this financial world order change, it often you know, comes along with war. Not every war, you know, get, gives you a new financial world order, but every new financial world order has been preceded by a war as sort of that mechanism to have a reason to come together and make a reset because you know it's unlikely that everybody's going to come together proactively when there's so much hostility between these different regions. So I would buckle up, you know, the, the scene has been set no matter what happens, no matter who gets in, that there are some very scary things coming down the pike. So button yourself down, you know, do whatever you can to make sure that you have um, your financial situation, your financial house in order, because it is very likely that things are going to be getting uglier sooner than later, unfortunately. Carol, I love you. I hate your message. No, you are the best. Thanks, Carol. Come back soon. I appreciate you as I always do. Thank you. <laughs> I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.